Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here today, and in today's video we're going to be looking at the AP stat in Blade and Soul. More specifically, we're going to be looking at how this AP stat impacts your overall DPS, various other attack power bonuses in the game, as well as some points about maximizing your overall DPS. If you've ever been curious as to how your weapon interacts with your AP stat or the RNG factor of damages, this is going to be a very useful video for you. Real quick, before we begin, if you are new to the channel, new to Blade and Soul, or have been watching this channel because you like it more than Kuropi's, please consider subscribing. That way you can stay up to date whenever a new video comes out. Without further ado, let's get into it. So if you've been playing this game for at least a day after reaching level 55, you've probably encountered someone recruiting for a party based only on the AP stat. In fact, you've probably seen it a lot in the F8 menu. And while I don't agree with the absurd numbers that people are asking for in these recruitment messages, like seriously 1.1 thousand AP to run Naryu Sanctum, the idea of gauging a player's overall DPS by their AP is a mathematically sound idea, as the AP stat has the greatest impact on the overall damage of your skills. So this ultimately begs the question, how does this AP stat impact the overall damage of your skills? For this example, we're going to use the Gunslinger, since that's my main character here, and we're going to use the skill Quick Shot. So every skill in Blade and Soul has a specific AP multiplier that determines the base damage of the skill. Quick Shot in the Fire Gunslinger's multiplier is 5.1, so the base damage of Quick Shot is going to be 5.1 times whatever your attack power is. If you are curious for any of the different skills in the game as to what this multiplier is, an amazing site that has all this information laid out is BNS Tree. I can't put it on my screen anymore because he's got a copyright on the bottom of the screen and I don't want to deal with that, but the link will be in the description below. I highly recommend checking out their website. It is fantastic. So now you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, but Levi, you're a big dum-dum. The number isn't always the same every time. There's an RNG factor that determines which way it goes. It has nothing to do with the AP. Well, you're sort of right. I am a big dum-dum, but I'm not that stupid. So, looking at Quick Shot, we know the scaling to be 5.1, so if we multiply 376, our current attack power, times 5.1, we will get 1918 damage. So, theoretically, doing our base calculation, every single shot with Quick Shot should do 1918 damage. You can clearly see this is not the case, it goes between 1775 to 2060. These two numbers represent a spread of about 142 points, or 142 damage, uh, either side of that number, the 1900 number that we had originally. So where does that 140 damage come from? What is creating that spread? And the answer is actually really quite simple and interesting. It is the weapon in Blade and Soul. So every single weapon that you have in Blade and Soul, whatever you equip, has a different RNG factor. So these ore column pistols, the RNG factor is 28. If we put on my Aransu 3 pistols, uh, where are they at right here? Aransu 3 pistols, the RNG factor is 42. So if we bring up the skill bar back up here again a second, and obviously we have a lot more AP now, so our AP has jumped up to 968. So if we take the 968 AP, multiply it by 5.1, we get 4,936. So our weapon should be doing 4,936. But as you can see, it goes between 4728 to 5146. And if we take the difference there, we're looking at a spread of 210 points either way. So 210 either way. So basically how this works is that every weapon has that RNG factor. For example, the Aransu pistols is 42. You take that RNG factor and multiply by 5. These RNG factors are nowhere readily available. You'll have to do this little bit of math on your own to determine this RNG factor. I also have no way of confirming if these RNG factors are different from weapon to weapon or from class to class. All I can tell you is that my Aransu 3 pistols, the RNG factor is 42. There might be some crazy way to min-max if this RNG factor is different between the different weapons to get an absolute maximum highest damage shot, but at the end of the day, you're going to be doing the same average damage, and damage per second is what counts here in Blade and Soul. So that's how you determine the upper and lower bounds, or the base upper and lower bounds, that RNG factor times 5, then you add that and subtract that from the number that you calculate by multiplying your AP times the scaling factor for the skill that you acquire from bnstree.com. Really quite simple. So these two numbers, or this range of numbers, is what all additional bonuses you add to your character get applied to. It doesn't get applied to that base AP number, it gets applied to this range. So for example, if you have elemental damage that increases your elemental damage by 30%, this elemental damage stat down here is probably behind my webcam, so I'll slide it over. This number right here, if this is like 130%, this range increases by 30%. So right now the range between these highs and the lows is 210 plus 210, so 420. This will increase by 30%. So if you increase 420 by 30%, you get 546. So if I go ahead and throw on all my accessories here and bring up my elemental damage to 130%, I'm sitting at 128%, which is just about 130%. The gap is now 
539 points. So right around the exact number that I calculated. So this is how you can calculate your little gap or your damage increase. So whenever you increase your damage by 30%, you're also increasing this gap by 30%. Same thing applies to soul shields. If I put my soul shield set back on by equipping my outfit, the number itself, the actual damage number increases by 60%, but the gap also increases by 60% between the high and the low bound. If you want more information on how any of these stats impact your character, I do have separate videos dedicated to elemental damage on the channel, so you can go ahead and check those out if you want. So why did I go through and tell you how your damage of your skills is affected by all these different stats? It's because I wanted to point out that AP is the only stat in the game that you can increase that will not affect the RNG nature of your character. So if you were to increase your character's elemental damage by a certain percentage, or if you were to increase your soul shields that you obtain that adds a certain percentage to any one of your skills, those are affected by the RNG stat that you get from your weapon. However, an increase to your AP will not be affected by that RNG stat. You will always be getting the true value of the stat that you put in. This means that AP gives you the most consistent increase to your character's overall DPS. As it does not increase the spread between the highs and the lows, it just moves the start point for that spread. Now just don't blindly follow into the idea that increasing your attack power is going to increase your overall DPS the most, because that is not true. Elemental damage gives you flat bonuses, soul shields give you great bonuses as well, just because it's increasing the RNG factor of your character does not mean that it is not as good an increase. It is definitely very useful to get bonuses from these different sources as well. If you're curious about how these stats impact each other, like accuracy or piercing and all those different stats that you get by switching out accessories or weapons, I do have videos on the channel also dedicated to doing math on those and giving you minimum numbers that you need, so feel free to check those out as well as you try to min-max your character. So that just leaves us with two stats left for the attack power, and they're pretty simple and self-explanatory, and I'm just covering them for completion's sake. That is PvP attack power and boss attack power. PvP attack power is your attack power as it applies during 6v6 fights, as well as open world PvP. So if you start fighting someone on the server, or if you're fighting someone in 6v6, this stat doesn't mean anything, it is your PvP attack power stat that means everything. Same thing with boss attack power, except this applies to boss encounters, so raid bosses, dungeon bosses, this will be your attack power stat as it applies to that boss. So if you're thinking about your maximum DPS against something, this is the stat you want to look for, or these are the two stats you're going to want to look for, whereas this attack power is just regular trash mobs you're fighting your way to the dungeon bosses. And that is basically it for attack power in Blade and Soul, guys. So I hope you found this video useful. Once again, like I would said like three times in this video already, I have other videos that go over all the different stats. So go ahead and check those out if you want to see how these different stats all interact with each other. It's actually really interesting to me anyway, how all these maths work out with each other. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, if you found it informative, please consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already, and also please consider leaving a like because it does make me happy when I get to see that notification on my phone. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next video. Face.